give money for the outsourcing, which is still a problem for them because they don't just want financial assistance for the camps. They want legal means of entry for their citizens, labor schemes, to bring remittances back. It's been a great pleasure to speak with you. Dr. Angeliki Dimitriadi is a senior research fellow at the Hellenic Foundation for European Foreign Policy here in Athens. She was also with the European Council for Foreign Relations. Thank you very much for being with us on the Religion and Ethics Report. Thank you for having me. That's the program for this week. At our homepage on the RN website, you can download and share our stories. Thanks to my producer, Nadia El Ghali, and technical producer, Simon Branthwaite. I'm Andrew West. Back next week. Nervous, excited, waiting for it. Go Fiji. Right, the Fiji, and for us here on the city Lake. In Fiji, the game that will stop the nation will be this gold medal playoff game. We're at the community hall, the yeah, best abilities are here, but also lots of kids from the local school. They've just managed to hook up the TV, so there were loud cheers just a few seconds ago. I believe most of the business houses have allowed the employees to go and watch the game. Business houses, people, schools, friends, everybody. All the kids that formed in lines as they uh, marched into the community hall shouting, Go Fiji, go, go Fiji, go, go Fiji, go, go Fiji, go. go, Fiji, go. go, Fiji, go. Fiji has won its first ever gold medal with a barnstorming. The Fijians scored seven tries to one in a 43 points to seven victory. Join us for Pacific Beach, Monday to Friday, here on Radio Australia. Serendipity. The algorithms that drive them are programmed to ask for the like. Fostering a chance discovery is the last thing they're designed to do. But does that literal and linear approach stifle creativity? Well, we'll meet some people who believe serendipity can be engineered. Very odd. That's Future Tense. With me, Anthony Fennell. Today at 2 p.m. PMG time on Radio Australia. Australia and ABC Radio, this is ABC News. I'm Kerry Worthington. A detainee on Papua New Guinea's Manus Island says a lack of certainty about the future is torture for him and other asylum. The government proposed to send donors to the country of origin or central in PNG. Kurdish refugee Beruz Bichani says another option must be found. But he's dismissed Australian Immigration Minister Peter Dutton's repeated assertion that the men will never be allowed to come to Australia. We only focus on this, but majority of people here don't want to go to Australia. Because Australian government has treated us like a criminal and they have humiliated us and tortured us here. Thousands of people are expected to walk off the Northern Territory Temple Station today, reenacting the worker strike that sparks the beginning of Australia's Aboriginal land rights movement. Eliana Lawford reports from Kalkaringi. In 1966, around 200 stockmen and house servants walked the station in protest against poor wages and living conditions. Today, 50 years on, descendants of the Garingi protesters, along with federal and territory politicians, are walking off the station again. This time in celebration. So what we've eventually resulted in a portion of Wayfield being returned to the Garingi people and now surrounds the Aboriginal land by the past. Celebrations continue throughout the day. Eliana Wolford, ABC News, Kakarinji. Russia says it's prepared to back a ceasefire in the Syrian city of Aleppo following an impassioned appeal by the UN Special Envoy to Syria, Staffan de Mistura. He's angrily condemned the war and parties in Syria saying aid convoys are ready to go but are waiting for a pause in fighting. Russia has Syrian government and makes frequent airstrikes on Aleppo against rebels and the Islamic State group. Mr de Mistura says continued fighting has meant not a single convoy has reached besieged areas in the city for a month. We ask for at least a pause of 48 hours. We insist 